Okay, that's two and a half minutes. That's good. You see, I'm going for the record for the longest time talking about football without mentioning Brett Farm. Oh, crap! Brett Farm. You see, ESPN the other day on uh, Sports Nation, they've got into the Guinness Book of World Records for mentioning Brett Farm's name 204 times in one broadcast. And when Tim Tebow heard about that, he said, what do I have to do, get another confession? Where are we now? How's it going back there, Ronnie? Oh my gosh, I don't have a bad night when Ronnie's not even listening. Hey, but Ronnie's a heck of a bartender today. She makes rusty nails so good, people need a tetanus shot after drinking them. And when she, and uh, Sherry, when she makes sex on the beach, you have to smoke a cigarette after you drink it. Uh, Brad over there, he's got a, he's got a drink that combines the ingredients of sex on the beach with an Alabama slammer. It's called the Gulf Shores Conjugal Visit. Yeah. Anyway, my name is Kelly Flanagan. And yes, I know. That's a very Irish name. Actually, I'm part French and part Irish. Therefore, every time I go into a bar, I pick a fight and then surrender. No, please, man, you can have one. Got an Irish name, but I don't drink. I'm not Catholic. I hate potatoes. Okay, I don't really hate potatoes. I just can't eat them because I'm diabetic. Anybody here diabetic? Any diabetics in the crowd? They got type 2 diabetes? I haven't always been diabetic, but uh, in 1998, I moved from West Virginia to Alabama. And in Alabama, type 2 diabetes is like a prerequisite for citizenship. Yeah, that you have to learn the language. I don't want to get into that. Diabetes is a scary thing, though. I mean, it can affect your feet, it can affect your pancreas, your heart, you know, your kidneys. And if that's not bad enough, the other day I was watching television and a Cialis commercial came on and the guy said that diabetes contributed to his ED. Let me tell you something. I have lived in Alabama for more than 10 years and believe you me, if diabetes contributes to erectile dysfunction, the South is not going to rise again. I guarantee you that. I mean, I felt bad for that guy on TV though. You know, I hope the Cialis works for him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine waking up in the morning knowing that that lancet that you stick your finger in it to check your blood sugar is the only thing you can still use? And then a the beach commercial comes on. And a guy says that high cholesterol contributes to ED. So that's why the Baptists serve all these fried foods. They're trying to keep you from having sex. Yeah, uh, finally starting to get attention to the crowd up front. At least I can ask for him. Somebody give me a topic. Topic for a joke. a little improv here. What? I already covered that with the Cialis in the back. <laughs> uh, anyway. Besides that, hormones going crazy anyway because I got divorced recently. Yeah, I got, I, yeah, I got divorced. After I got my doctorate, my wife moved back to Oklahoma. She refused to leave Oklahoma. I couldn't leave Alabama. I had a teaching job here. And the long distance relationship got too much for us, so we got a divorce. She lives in New Jersey. See, I'm from the 1200 mile relationship to the 800 mile relationship. You know, I have to explain that one. Sometimes the mind is like an autopsy. You only find things out when it's too late to do any good. Yes, my uh, wife filed for divorce right after a very tense film holiday weekend. We were fighting, and she filed for divorce the day after the Martin Luther King holiday. And all I could say was, Who's the father? 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 Who's the
Oh, they got some good attention. I have a white queen! Get ready, John. <laughs> I think I went out more welcome now. Good night. Yeah, yeah, yeah.